You're watching Neocash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ. And Darren. We discuss the G20 Summit, John Oliver Talks Crypto, all this and more here on episode 246 on Thursday, March 15th, 2018. In the traditional markets, we have gold down to $1,317, silver's down to $16.39, oil is down to $61.22, the Dow is slight, down slightly uh, to 24,828 points, and the 30-year tre U.S. Treasury yield is down to 3.06%. Thanks for that, Darren. And Bitcoin Cash in the crypto markets is down to $920, Bitcoin Segwit is down to $8,290, Ethereum is down to $603, and Dash is down to $414, and Litecoin is down to $162. Just a reminder that you can tune into Neocash Radio every week. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and more. And we're, of course, on YouTube with our YouTube channel. You can subscribe, like, and share that as well. Well, I'll tell you, it was a down week in the markets, JJ. It certainly was, Darren. Uh, the the prices, it, I mean, it's everything. The, everything. Gold, silver, the treasury yield is down, which actually means the treasury went up. But um, yeah, a really big down week this week. Uh, and uh, there was something else. Uh, oh, I think the only, the only winners this week were uh, holders of dollars. Holder, <laughs> holders of dollars, the, the hodlers of dollars. Um, well, Japan adds a growing uh, their voice to the growing chorus of nations seeking cryptocurrency discussion at the G20 summit. This from snews.com. A Japanese official involved in the G20 talks has stated that Japan will emphasize anti-money laundering regulations for cryptocurrency during next week's G20 meeting. The unnamed Japanese official likely understands the benefits of nations working together on cryptocurrency AML as a single nation acting alone is unlikely to be able to create an uh, effectual deterrent against decentralized technology that transcends borders. Okay, you know, uh, this whole, th th in, in emphasizing the anti-money laundering stuff, once again, is just, is just, uh, it's it's not, it's, it's, what is it? It's not a hypochondriac, what is it, Darren? Like, uh, hyperbole, that's what it is. It's more hyperbole of, of uh, I don't know why they're focusing on this. Darren, what's going on with this? Well, I mean, there are stringent laws on uh, that govern transfer of government currency from person to person. And uh, so it seems that if one thought those laws were, were a good idea, that uh, it, it might be a good idea to also have s similar laws uh, involving cryptocurrency. But right, right now, they already have those laws. If, you're, uh, if you ever trade with an exchange or anything like that, um, you pretty much have to follow all the AML regulations. And, um, and then if you, uh, but if you do a peer to peer transaction, of course, I mean, generally that's not there for large amounts. I think you're supposed to do something, but, um, anyway, so, so that's what, that's, that's what I think, JJ. I mean, well, Japan is joined by the Franco German effort to raise the cryptocurrency discussion at the conference. And uh, other notable endorsers include the U.S. US Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen, uh, who recently indicated that he is planning on bringing up the crypto-related issues. Now, once again, it's it just sort of, it seems like their, their efforts to talk about crypto are, one, misguided. For one, they're not addressing the real uh, concerns with what's going on. Instead, they're, they're looking at the boogeyman, sort of glossy exterior, but... What really needs to happen is that some sound advice and guidance needs to come out of these talks so that businesses that want to, to use crypto, they know what they can actually do and what, what they can uh, uh, not worry about you know, coming back to bite them once regulations do take effect, once things do happen. Yeah. Uh, once again, I mean, crypto is not the big uh, end-all, be-all for money laundering. I think there are plenty of other systems, <laughs> whether it's property, uh, fiat currency, or, or whatever else that are better for laundering money than crypto. But that's right. I mean, it's it's just that's the boogeyman that keeps being brought up is the idea that for some reason there is a massive effort to use cryptocurrencies to launder money, which is absurd. Yes. Yeah, so... Um 
Other news, uh, Circle rolls out crypto investment app in 46 states. So Circle officially launched Circle Invest. It's, it's a digi- it's digital investment and storage app available in iTunes and Google Play. Uh, the app is available in 46 states. That includes Minnesota, Wyoming, Hi- Hawaii, and New York. The company is focused on making the app available in New York as soon as possible and has already had already has the New York bit license. So one little caution to uh, listeners, JJ, is that I, I did see a report that Circle wouldn't allow the withdrawal of Bitcoin. You could basically only buy and then sell and, and put money in. You put fed, uh, government money in and take government money out. So, <clears throat> so do your research to so make sure if you're planning to use Circle, make sure they can support your use case. Uh, the app allows users to invest or trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, and Litecoin with tokens coming in the future. Users can connect their their bank accounts and tr- trades are commission-free. Circle makes uh, money by taking a 1.5 or 2% difference between the coins buy and sell prices, the bid ask spread. So, um, yeah, so that it, even though the, the price, the cost is com- somewhat hidden, that is uh, a substantial spread. Well, that's, uh, you know, we, we expected something like this from Circle once they, they bought Poloniex. So, you know, the, the next step, of course, is to have a wallet. Right. Um, some news that's definitely affecting uh, crypto companies across the board is Google, Google banning crypto advertisements uh, following the same sort of situation or the decision that Facebook made. Google is banning uh, crypto advertisements, specifically uh, advertisements that talk about uh, ICOs, and that talk about uh, basically making money and, and off the trading of crypto and things uh, like that. The pump and dumps. That- yeah, I heard this is to um, actually this new policy is going to affect on June 1st. And um, I, I have kind of mixed feelings about this, JJ. I can definitely see, you know, if I ran an advertising platform, I would definitely not want to have a scammy ad on my platform. I wouldn't want to have a reputation for, you know, ads on my site are, are good or ads on my platform are good and you know you know if it's ad for jeans you buy jeans and get jeans you know it, 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 nothing like no, no ads where you just send in money and nothing happens so uh, i can definitely see the need for something like this but at the same time uh banning everything outright um probably can uh, cause some good actors some good projects not to get as much exposure but also, I can understand why Google doesn't want to do all the research on every new thing that comes along. So it's easier to just have a, a catch-all and, and possibly have a few um, <clears throat> miss out on a few good ads, or then then uh, actually hire people to research everything and and come up with what's a good project and what's not. I mean, you 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 bring up a good topic. It's it's the, all the research necessary to figure out if something is actually a good project or not. Of course. You know that's that takes a lot of effort and time, and that's something we're looking at doing here at Neocash. But like, let's you know, there's there's a corollary. I guess that we'll, we'll I guess we'll get into it here shortly. But uh, so getting to the next story, last week tonight with John Oliver talked about crypto. So this was a pretty big story as far as the coverage was concerned. And a recent episode of the HBO show featured a discussion about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that did a pretty good job of explaining the space. John talked about BitConnect, pump and dump groups, and providing viewers viewers with a good idea about some of the risks associated with crypto trading. He then went on to talk about EOS. At the start of this piece, I said that I didn't want to make predictions. And who knows? Maybe EOS is going to be the next Google. I don't think it is. And I certainly don't think it can be worth over a billion dollars at this point. But I could be wrong. I'm absolutely not, but I could be. (laughs) The point is, if you choose to invest in the cryptocurrency space, just know that you're not investing, you're gambling. So there he is. He says, you know, and that's something you'll hear us say a lot on Neocash Radio. Right. You're not investing, you're gambling. And I think this is a critically important thing to talk about. Now, in in a related way, we can also talk about EOS, EOS. Darren, have you looked at it at all? Well, I looked at it enough to... to, uh read the terms of their token they have this token that's uh trading around on the ethereum platform and um 
I got to the sentence that said that the token won't be usable on the EOS platform that they're planning to launch. And so to me, I don't know what the point of the token is. I, I, with a lot of these tokens, I don't know what the value proposition they're making. Of course, they're making a value proposition that they're going to make a new platform, but, um, but it's not clear how the token holder benefits from that new platform. And it's actually explicit on their site that they're, this token won't have any use on the new platform. Right. So, um, so that, that's about as much research as I did. Basically, after I read that, it's like, okay, I don't want to touch an EOS token, and that's all I really need to know about that. Well, EOS is it, it, like a uh, really hyped, overhyped project that basically was talking about being the Ethereum killer, basically doing what Ethereum is doing, only better. And so then they had some, uh, what well, a celebrity spokesperson. I'm sure if you saw the John Oliver, you can you, you know all that backstory there. But it's it's like they are running this year long uh, ICO, basically this huge money grab. And we've said on Neocash when we first looked at the initial ICO, we talked about that. We talk, we warned our listeners against participating because it did. It, they have nothing to show for it. Okay, they have no platform usable product to show for it and they have so much funding and it's just like you are you're so many years behind ethereum you have no guarantee that this token is going to go anywhere you have all this funding and you have nothing to show for it i don't think eus uh i, I mean i don't i don't think that people should be buying it anymore and i don't think that it should be worth more than a couple cents i mean that's just I don't see a reason why. I think that's a pretty high evaluation there, JJ. But uh, so anyway, the, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I think with all these tokens, people will buy them, which can drive the price up, and they'll buy them with the idea that it could be higher later, and they could sell for a profit. So if that's the only reason that you would get into a token, I don't think that's a very good reason. Uh, in fact, I would uh, encourage you not to do that. Um yeah, just stay on the sidelines. Uh, that's what I'm doing with the EO, with EOS. If they do have a platform out, then um, then I'll take another look at it if I have time. But uh, but right now there's no platform. I like the way Satoshi did it. JJ, he didn't you know go around and ask all his friends for money and say I got this great idea. Let's do this project. And all that blah, blah blah. He just like here's a paper. And then like three months later, here's code <laughs> and that's it. And so you didn't have to, you know, wonder how the development's going. You didn't have to do anything. You could, there was a the code. It's right there. You could run it. You could see it work. And, um, you know, I wish some of these projects, if they have good ideas, actually did something similar where they went ahead and released the product and then uh, maybe seek funding later. I mean, uh, um Let's see. Uh, Open Bazaar has some traditional VC funding, and they're b b building a product, and they have something out that you can see, and uh, that's kind of the way I would like to see projects going. I, th I think more of the. I mean, there doesn't need to be. If you're doing a crypto project, you don't need to rely on crypto funding. You can use VC funding, you know, the traditional venture capitalist funding, and uh, that generally you would be you would only be available to accredited investors and. Some people don't like that because, you know, like, like the small time investors like, oh, well, it's it's not fair. Right. But at the same time, the reason why those accredited investors are out there is because they they have money to lose, <laughs> literally. And um, supposedly they they are a bit more savvy about what they do with their money. Well, uh, you know, that's good stuff there. The the idea that you can just throw some anonymous person could throw money at an ICO and then reap rewards later. You know, that was, that was the big, the big thing that happened this past summer, you know, when the ICO, that's why I thought that was the ICO sort of golden age, because there was no one really watching what was going on. There was no one, I mean, it would caught everybody off guard. Yeah. You know, you just had this rush of ICOs and rush of people like seeing the, the the price that people bought this token at and then seeing what they were selling it for later and being like, oh my God, they, that person made, you know, a million, not a million times, but, you know, they made a tremendous amount of profit off of flipping those tokens. And next, that became the thing to do. 
The thing to do was just not, it didn't even matter what the project had to do. It mattered how much hype the project had going for it to get that first price of the token. Because you dumped the token the first week or so it was available to sell anyway. So you didn't care at that point. Those, those sorts of token holders, I should say, or hodlers, they weren't really hodlers. You know, that's the difference. I mean, people want to point out, they want to talk about being a hodler. They want to talk about being some sort of uh, some crypto investing guru. But I mean, the people who make the money don't hold, they sell. Okay, that's the big difference between the people who have and the people who don't have. The and I, I think the people that do weather well rel in this space, they don't, they don't even think of it as buying and selling. They call rebalance. Rebalance, like if you have a, a portfolio of anything... Um, there's a certain amount of risk in all those assets you own, whether they're stocks or cryptocurrencies or anything. And, and, uh, and so um, if one goes way up and, the, and, and uh, some go down, well, the risk of holding this higher priced as- asset is more because there's more room for it to go down. It could be overpriced now, all that. There's a kind of deviation to the mean thing that can happen. And so... Uh, Savvy people might rebalance where they take the one that's high and buy the one that's low. Well, and and savvy people aren't necessarily yeah. And what I think you're hitting on right there, it's not necessarily about the amount of dollars. It's about the amount of coins. And so what a big tactic is is buying Bitcoin and selling it uh, or converting it to something else that will allow you to get more Bit Bitcoin when you come back to Bitcoin, like that or Ethereum or whatever. Use whatever coin you want as your your sort of reserve currency but i mean the big thing was accruing more uh, ether tokens or accruing more bitcoin through these trades it didn't really matter about the dollar profit it was about how much more ether can i get when i come back to ether and then as ether or bitcoin or whatever goes up in value then that's when the portfolio is actually valued or, or sort of realized is is because Getting your getting from ether to US dollar or Bitcoin to US dollar is a lot easier than many of these tokens and, and coins that are being uh, speculated on. So that's sort of why the idea behind it isn't it's it is a numbers game, but it's about the number of coins I'm gonna have at the end of the day, not the US dollar amount necessarily. Anyway, uh, we you know we, we always talk about a disclaimer on every show because we do talk about these these idea of buying and selling. But any content on the New Cash Radio podcast and our website should not be regarded as financial or legal advice. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest or gamble more than you're willing to lose, and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it in a wallet whose private keys you control. For Neocash Radio, this is JJ. And this is Darren. NeoCashRadio.com.